So now that we see this is what's going to happen at Revelation 12, 4, let's see what happens. And did cast them to the earth. So they're going to be cast down out of here from the second heaven where the stars are to right here down on the earth. Why? And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be devoured. Okay, so this dragon was about to swallow up Israel right here, right? For to devour her child as soon as, as it was born. As soon as the child is born from this woman, Satan wants to devour it. See that? Okay, so a lot of people, um, I kind of taught this a little bit, but I've showed you that this woman with child is not referring to the Revelation 12 sign up in heaven that a lot of people made a big deal about dating the rapture at the, at the month of September. Now, you know, as much, you know this pastor wants it to be true? Yeah, I don't want to disprove it. I want to prove it. You know why? I could have been in heaven by now. All right, who, who loves this earth, man? I don't know about you, man. I just want to be up in heaven with my Savior who died for me. All right, but anyway, so... Apparently then, this is proof, this is not referring to some uh, cosmos or some kind of uh, planet meeting with another planet out there, you know, and then that's the heavenly sign for the rapture. No, that's not what it is. Because Satan the dragon is devouring this child. See that? So this is not, so this is a literal application over here where Satan tries to devour, eat up this child. What is he trying, how is he devouring, eating up this child? So then who is this child, right? That's the question. So here are some interesting points over here about who this child may be. <laughs> now the standard, I'm going to give you a standard traditional teaching, and then I'm going to give you some interesting theories who this child is. You ready? All righty. The first person, which could be very obvious, and I kind of did mention this before, at, at Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, verse 1 through 2, is that this could be referring to Jesus. You might say, why is it referring to Jesus? Because if you keep reading over here at verse 5, and she brought forth a man child who was to what? Rule all nations with a rod of iron. So notice that this woman who brought forth this child, this child was to rule the whole world with a rod of iron. All right, who's the one who will rule with the rod of iron at the book of Psalms chapter 2, at the book of Revelation? That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the being who will take over this earth. So all these elites, they can grab more of this earth if they want to. You might say, why are you doing that, Pastor? We got to fight. You're not going to fight it. The Antichrist has to rule. Amen. See, that has to happen. You're not going to stop it. You know who's going to stop it? Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ gets the full glory, conquers all of this earth, takes away the satanic systems from the elites and claims it for himself. See, he's going to do that. So there's nothing you can do about it. What you need to do is what Jesus instructed you. You need to be crafty to survive on this earth and to keep getting souls saved and keep building up ministry so that people can hear about Bible-believing truth. They're not going to hear it if you shut down your ministry. So that's what we got to be doing in the meantime. All right, now this is referring to possibility number one, Jesus, that's a traditional teaching. And yes, Satan tried to devour Jesus Christ when he was a child, right? What happened when he was a child? Herod tried to kill, tried to make sure that Jesus Christ was non-existent, so he, he did the, one of the most brutal things you'll ever hear throughout history. We're going to kill all the baby, uh, we're going to kill all uh, newborns from two years old and under as well. That's, that's brutal. That's a madman over there. Okay, so that's possibility number one. Possibility number two is that this is a man-child to rule all nations with the rod of iron. That's the key. Okay, now notice here that this child is from the woman, right? The woman, remember, is who, as we pointed out here? Israel, right? So it's like a subset category from Israel. That's the idea. Now think about it. Think about the only subset category that you can think about. Because this is, uh, what book is this? The book of what? Revelation. Now Jesus being born from this woman is not at, during the book of Revelation. This was all the way at the past, right? Yeah. So at the past. We're open to this interpretation because if you look at Revelation 12 again, this is all past tense, see? Yeah. 
So notice verse 4, ready to be delivered. You'll notice uh, verse 5, she already gave birth to this man child, passed, so it did happen. Um, child was caught up unto God and to his throne. So notice right here, uh, if this is Jesus, yes, it is true. He did ascend up into glory, right? After he died, buried, and resurrected, what did he do? He ascended back up to heaven, see? So that's why this is, uh, this seems pretty obvious to a lot of uh, first-time Bible readers that if the first person candidate they'll be thinking about is Jesus, and that's why that's the standard traditional teaching, see? So it's natural to think Jesus. A lot of it is in past tense, and this did already happen. But there are also other possibilities. Because this is in the book of Revelation, we also have to think about that the context and the timeline could be future, not past. Because this is written in the book of Revelation. So think about it. Think about a subset category that is from Israel that you can find in the book of Revelation. And there's only one subset category or group that you can think about that comes out of Israel, and that's 144,000. All right, so look at Revelation 7 again, right? We've seen that before, Revelation 7. Verse 4. Notice Israel is covered at verse 4, the woman, but there's a subset category or a group that come out of Israel, okay? So look at verse 4. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed in 144,000 of all the what? Tribes of the children of, from who? Israel. See? So this could be referring to the children of Israel, this 144,000. Now let me give you a, a deeper one than that. Remember uh, Satan tried to devour uh, the child, ready to devour the child when it was to be born? We, we were thinking at this interpretation, it was referring to Jesus when Herod was annihilating all those little babies, right? And the two-year-olds, right? If we're going to think that that verse, so let's assume Revelation 12, uh, 4, was refer Revelation 12, 4 and 5, was referring to this 144,000, and then devouring the child is referring to Herod, killing all those uh, newborns and two-year-olds, then these, it's possible, which is uh, me, I don't know, I feel like it needs more validation, but like I told you, I look at all sides, right? Unless it's disproven from Scripture. So this could be possibly referring that these 144,000 who come, come out at the tribulation are referring to these two-year-olds and under from Herod's time who were annihilated from Herod. I mean, because the context here is that this dragon was ready to devour the child, right? So then that time period that you can think of, if you want to put 144,000, is going to be this one. That wouldn't make sense. So that's a teaching that's been going around online, actually, that's been pretty uh, interesting and new, actually, to a lot of people. But it could also be, you know, because in Revelation, we want to find right interpretation, right? So that's why I have to cover all sides here. Amen. And because it's a deep doctrinal book, you can't say, this is right, this is wrong. Yeah. Look, with deep doctrine, what you're going to have to do is be open to all sides and then see which one makes the most sense. And trust me, when you find one that makes the most sense, you, you probably won't be able to disprove the other theories and possibilities. Yeah. So that's why it's always best to just leave it open. Leave it open. Otherwise, you're going to be a typical onliner who's going to fuss about the silliest thing and you're going to soon find out that you're all alone teaching and believing the doctrine and you're the only one that's probably right with God. And that's the problem with a lot of onliners, especially arrogant ones who start their channels. And these people think that they're the only one that's right. They got all the doctrine right. But guess what? There are 50 suckers like you who have the same mentality with their channel. That's not this pastor here. This pastor, he believes in Bible-believing truth, and he does believe that he's, uh, like I said, we're probably the only Bible-believing church in this whole Bay Area. But that doesn't mean that I'm the only person around the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. All right? Do you know how many Bible-believing preachers are like me, who are the minority? Thousands. Yeah. All right? And there are hundreds of Bible-believing churches around the world like me. 
see? And they're probably the only one in their whole territory or maybe in, in their whole city or perhaps even in their whole state and yes, even in their whole country, it could be possible. Okay, so um, we see that one. So this could be referring to this other possibility then about devouring, right? That's why we're trying to follow this context of when is this ready to be delivered to devour her child, right? If not this time period of Herod, then it could be referring to the time period again, context, future. So it could be referring to that time period, which is true. What happens is the Antichrist, he slays a lot of the Jews actually. So he could be also be trying to killing and devouring these 144,000. Now the verse said devour, right? Yes, sir. Because it says devour, it means like eating, right? Yes. How does the Antichrist execute people during the tribulation? You remember, right? Beheading, but beheading is part of what? Human eating sacrifices. Amen. So it could be referring to that time period too. So the time periods could be referring to the future or it could be referring to that past time with Herod. All right, another one. There's another one? Yeah, there's another one, all right? All right, another one is, yeah, we'll probably never pass verse five. <laughs> it's like verse three, all right. So let's try to wrap this up. Now this one is actually what I think a pretty strong uh, candidate, I think. The other one is David, actually, David. But uh, to support this argument that it could be referring to 144,000, there was another verse that I overlooked. Look at Revelation 2. Okay. Now, did you remember this? Did you remember this when we were going through our seven churches? Now, remember, doctrinally, doctrinally, the time period that we see is at the tribulation timeline, right? Remember that? that I, sh uh, I told you that before? All right. Now, did you remember this doctrinal application with the church of Thyatira? Look at Revelation 2, 26 through 27. Thought that we remembered all of it, right? Thought that we wrote it all down, right? But you'd be surprised how much that we could forget. So let's rewind. Du -du 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 -du. Verse 26. And he that overcometh. See, that's any individual. And that's a tribulation reference, right? Remember we covered that, that that's a tribulation reference about overcoming, overcoming. Mm -hmm. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. See, that's a tribulation wording. We can see that again, right? So I'm not going to explain why. I already explained that last time. To him will I give power over the what? Nations, and he shall rule them with a what? Ah, so it's not just Jesus Christ. It's to any person during the tribulation timeline. Why? Because remember, I told you something that was mind-blowing to you. When Jesus Christ rules over all this world, he wants to share it with you. Amen. Unfathomable, right? What a God you serve. Yeah, amen. What a God. Amen. To him be all the glory, honor, and praise in all the kingdoms. Amen. To him deserve all of that. Amen. But he gives you, he lets you share wow. all of it. Yeah, all Lord. of it. My God. All of it. <laughs> all right, now start getting busy serving God. Amen rather than wasting your time accumulating wealth with a small little portion of this earth, and if you're very lucky, a small little household in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, you're rich. Oh, that's your life. You want to waste all your years of life on, huh? Don't you want everything that God owns and has? What a God. What a God. All right, anyways, let's uh, go to David now, all right? All right, what time is it? All right, so let's see how much I can cover Look at Ezekiel, please, chapter 34. Ezekiel 34. All right, now the wording right here we see has to do with ruling the nations, right? And there's a lot, and that's referring to Jesus Christ, that kind of language. Or it could refer to the tribulation saints too. We've seen why that's possible. Now, if that language is referring to Jesus Christ, ruling all nations, you, et cetera, Think about one of the people who's a great type of Jesus Christ. One of the people who's a great type of Jesus Christ is actually David. Here's something else that's interesting. Another interesting thing concerning about King David is that King David, who's also a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, he will, he will, like Jesus Christ, literally rule as King of Israel again. 
Didn't you know that? That's why a lot of people, remember when Jesus the Messiah came? What did they say about this Messiah? Have him restore the kingdom as our father, what? David. David. That's why you hear the term Davidic kingdom. Davidic kingdom. Davidic kingdom. Why? Because God's ideal kingdom at the millennium is patterned after David's kingdom. It should have been Solomon. Solomon was the most wealthy, the most powerful out of all kingdoms in Israel. But no, because Solomon messed up, God saw David as the pattern. Yeah. So David's kingdom. David, David, David. Why do they use that word David for a future time period of a kingdom? You know why? Because David will literally rule. So look at the book of Ezekiel. And then uh, we'll look at, uh, let's see right here. We're going to look at chapter 34 and uh, verse 23, verse 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them. Now, Jesus called the great shepherd, right? Now, look at this, though. Look at how much language referring to Jesus Christ can refer to David, though. And he shall feed them like Jesus. Jesus will feed his people. Even my what? Servant David, he shall feed them and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a what? Prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken, them, spoken it. Now look at this. Verse 25, look at this language. And I will make with them a covenant of peace. Now remember, who's the guy who wants to take over the nation of Israel and claim that he's all for peace and makes a covenant with them? The Antichrist, see? This is the person of David that we're looking for, says the Jews. No, 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 that's the Antichrist. But see, the Antichrist is an imitator of Jesus Christ. He's going to imitate the ki ideal King David that the Jews are looking for. See that? So that's why it's very possible that this could be referring to David over here. Because if the woman is Israel, it is true David is that man-child that is born from this woman, Israel. So this is also very possible. What does this mean then? So if we go to Revelation 12, let's look at the full interpretation then. So the full interpretation can go this way. The latter part of verse 4 before the woman, Israel, which was ready to be delivered, she was ready to bring forth David, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So as soon as David was born, Satan wanted to devour and destroy David. So what we see right here is that throughout David's whole lifetime, he was uh, persecuted and devoured by Satan. But the only weakness, though, is that as soon as it was born, as verse 4 says, so maybe it did happen at David's past life. The Bible doesn't record it, though. So we don't know about that. Or it could, ref uh, let's look at verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with the rod of iron. So let's say that's David. So Israel brought forth David. And then what it did was, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. Okay, so notice that David, he goes up to heaven. Why? Because if this is referring to a future time period. Now, remember I showed you uh, Revelation chapter, what was it? Uh, let's look, go back over here. Revelation chapter 10, I believe. Yeah, Revelation chapter 10. Remember I showed you some interesting points over here at Revelation chapter 10 about the mystery identity of this being? Do you all recall that? And uh, I told you about this mystery identity that it could be referring to the person at Revelation 12. Yeah. So it could be referring to David, actually. It could be referring to the same person who is this savior, this superhero that's going to show up at the tribulation. So David can show up in the middle of the tribulation. Imagine all the action there. You got 144,000. You got the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. And then this savior that the Jews were waiting for, this king. And then this could, guy could be David. That's going to be a lot of action over there, yeah. dude. Wow. I mean, imagine that you got the... 13 bloodlines of the Illuminati over there, which consists of the 10 families and then the satanic trinity, false prophet, antichrist, and Satan, 
And you got Babylon, the great whore of Babylon at Revelation chapter 17, 18, the Roman Catholic system. And then you got the Antichrist uh, 10 world powers, which include America, uh, Russia, and England. That's going to be a lot of action. Dude, you talk about a television show that's worth watching with all different characters. This is going to be phenomenal, man. So that's going to be amazing. So when David shows up, what was David's kingdom? How was David's kingdom built? It was like David, he was known as a person who built up the kingdom and paved the way for Solomon. So you need a person like David to do something, to do something big probably. All right, so that's pretty interesting. Now, returning to our main text at verse 4, I mentioned to you that the weakness is that for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And I said that the weakness is there is no record that when David, as soon as David was born, the dragon, Satan, immediately attacked him. But what this could be referring to is that it was born from not from a woman, but from Israel, right? So as soon as David was anointed king, see that? Born to be Israel's king, we do know that Satan tried to immediately attack him. So, uh, that's another possibility you got to think of. All right, now the last possibility, whoo, what fun, all right. Is that, we, is that we don't know who this person is. All we know, <laughs> all we know is that it's some kind of hero that they're waiting for. So this is referring to some kind of hero that they're looking for. So whoever this hero is, God's going to raise this hero up who's going to be similar like David, like Jesus Christ. And this hero is going to come out and then defend and, for the nation of Israel. So that's intensely interesting, actually. So whoever, who, whoever the superhero, superhero is out there, we don't know. It might be one of you because you never really got saved to begin with. And when we got raptured, maybe you'll make up for it. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. God forbid, be raptured with me. Revelation chapter 12. Verse 5, we see right here, he was caught up unto God and to his throne. So the explanation for all these people, okay, all, all the remaining three here. So we saw Jesus. We can understand what that means. Caught up to heaven and to his throne because that did happen to Jesus. But what about these three? Do it happen to these three? Yes. Why does it happen to these three? Because I already covered it before and I'm not going to cover it again. There is a rapture in the tribulation. Wait a minute, Pastor. I thought you said that we will be raptured before the tribulation. Yes, I did. But you said there's a rapture during the tribulation. Yes, I did. What did you mean by that? There's two raptures. I explained it before. I'm not going to explain it again. There is a rapture for the Christian church before the tribulation, and we're gone. And then there's a separate rapture that God gives to the tribulation saints. So uh, these three uh, beings... We see they got raptured, the tribulation rapture. See, so that's a simple answer there. They did get caught up. But if, think about this, if these are the people who got raptured, there's someone left behind. There's still the woman left over that's persecuted by the dragon. Uh, we're, you'll notice that at verse 6, as soon, at verse 5, as soon as the child, let's say it's any of these three, okay? As soon as they got raptured to heaven, notice it says right here in verse 6, and the woman fled into the wilderness. See, she's being persecuted by Satan the dragon. See? So what could this mean? What this could mean then is that as soon as these people are raptured to heaven, there are still remaining Jews who are persecuted by the Antichrist and who are saints, who are the good guys. Really? Is that possible? Yeah. This explains a lot of wrong doctrine there. You hear so many rapture doctrines. One's before the tribulation. One's in the middle of the tribulation. One's after the, the tribulation. There's one that are partial raptures where if, you, if you're worthy enough, then you can be raptured to heaven. And if you're not worthy enough, you'd be left behind. But then there's another doctrine that says, no, as long as you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll be raptured no matter what. Which one's which? I'm so confused. You'd be surprised. All of them are true, but they're just not rightly divided dispensationalism. What does dispensational mean? You rightly divide versus the right group of people, right time period. I mean, that's the same thing. If I told you that, hey, I got a green car, and then if I told you, hey, I got a yellow car, and if I said, hey, I have a blue car, okay? And then let's say that I say something totally different. 
I have an orange bike. What are you all going to be thinking? You're all going to be thinking, there's contradicting information over here. Which one's which? How about all of them, man? Amen. You just didn't rightly divide all these things in proper context. It's just natural. It's common sense to think that way, to rightly divide things. Okay. So let's continue on over here. Why is the woman Israel left behind? Ah, remember? Uh, I showed you this verse, so I'm not going to show you again. Matthew 25. Remember Matthew 25? Ten virgins. Five were wise, five were foolish. See, these were saints. These weren't people who were in the bad guy side. These weren't people in the Antichrist side. These were saints trying to get ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb, trying to meet Jesus Christ. But what happened? Five of them weren't worthy enough. So they were left behind and five were raptured up. That explains the leftover people. See that? Not only that, there's a second thing, which I taught you before, and I'm not going to teach you again. Remember Revelation 11? I showed you at Revelation 11 that there was this rapture that happened of the two witnesses, and then the people who are supposed to be on the Antichrist side, all of a sudden we see a number of them following the prerequisites of the everlasting gospel at Revelation 14. They start to fear God, and they start to give Him glory. See, so there was a switch of sides now, see? So notice right here, you got to think about all these things. That way, everything can start to click and make sense. So that means then you don't have to be terrified today. Am I worthy enough to be found at the rapture? That's tribulation. Amen. That's not us today. Yeah, First Thessalonians 4 already gave you the answer. If you believe in Jesus Christ, guess what? Whether you're alive or dead, you go up. Thank you, you get raptured, see? How are you going to invalidate Ephesians 1.13 and Ephesians 4.30, which points out that even if you sin, you're not worthy enough, you're still sealed with the Holy Ghost all the way to the rapture. That's powerful, right? All righty. Notice how all this right doctrine, I'm just telling you from memory too. And some of you, this is not new information. This is something you've heard of before. You might say, man, that's so much knowledge. Aren't you blessed to be a Bible believer? See, this is something you already knew in your head. If this is new to you, then you're still growing. Or if some of you are not a Bible believer yet, and that's why this is new to you, today would be a great time. Amen. You're missing out. This is something that's just natural that's in the back of my head and memorized, and some of these members too. So get into it. Join a Bible-believing church. Grow. Amen. Okay?